back to Irish Footy Vlogs. Welcome back to another Premier Division preview show. We have five fixtures on Friday night in the Premier Division. JP's here. Uh, how are you doing, JP? You well? Is that sun coming in the window? Hi, it is uh, shining, sun shining all day here. Yeah, hopefully it won't be shining uh, in Inchicore for Derry and Friday, but we'll get to that soon enough. Well, we'll see. <laughs> Uh, we'll start off at Dalyman Park where Bohemians take on UCD and obviously Bowles were well beaten by Shamrock Rovers last time out. UCD, uh, you could use a different word than well beaten, I suppose, when they're beaten up in the brand new by Derry City. But uh, they drew one all actually earlier on in the season. To be fair to UCD, all joking aside, they probably deserve and should have won that match. Uh, Bowles are sixth in the league and 15 points. They're still technically in the European race. Uh, UCD obviously bottom with four points, no wins. Uh, you'd have to say it is a must win for Bohemians to try and get themselves back in the bike, isn't it? It is like they, they can't not go into this one and not not win it. Like, um, especially when they drew at the UCD bowl. We're yeah. probably lucky they, they come away with, with a point and they end up in that game. Mm. But it's um it's one of M ones everybody's beating UCD, like aren't they? The teams at the top, I mean. Like mm-hmm. Derry have beaten them twice, Rovers have beaten them, Pats, um, Dundalk have beaten them. I know they got yeah. a point that the school grounds against Sligo. They're not, as mm-hmm. we know, they're not a, they're not a walkover. And if you they beat them, you have to really play well. Um, and we know the Bows aren't quite doing that this season. I know they put in a good performance against Shelburne and came away with a four-one one. They probably have to put in a similar type performance in this game. Mm. Um, they get any, they 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 get anything out of it, and that's that's being kind them because UCD they can't, as we saw too against Pats where they took a lead. That if you give them an inch, they will be dangerous, and um, I'm sure that Keith Long will be telling his players the same thing. I think it's one of the games where the first goal, if there is a first goal, of course, is going to be critical because if UCD do something, get it. Might see a bit of panic in the Daily Man Faithful and certainly in the Bow squad because apart from UCD, Bohemian squad is probably the least experienced in the league, actually, when you look at them on the whole. Oh, absolutely. It's just actually thinking that myself that the first goal could be critical and not just because of the, the confidence of the Bulls players, but the confidence of Bulls supporters. Um, yeah. No doubt that they'll have an element there that, that will that, that won't panic, but they're, it's usually the, the panickers that. Um, be heard the loudest, if you know what I mean. And with the number of late goals that they've conceded over um the course of the early season, you've got the um question the mentality of the, the group as well. And mm. they go a goal behind um against UCD might not be good for them um if their mentality isn't good. Yeah, I mean UCD themselves obviously that was a really bad defeat last time out. How do you think they're gonna respond in this game? I think they'll respond well. Like a, mm. they haven't really been given what you would call a hiding this season until then. So it'll be mm. interesting to see how they respond. But I think they'll respond well. I think um I've just seen the day they they won the, the Column World Cup. Look, I know that's but they had a few did, yeah. did a few league did a few League of Ireland players on that team. So confidence be high among some of the group like going under this game against U C D um so well played, well done to them, and they'll be hoping that the guys that'll be going now on Friday night, they play in the League of Ireland, will be looking they to take that um result and they into this game. And look, every game is a free hit, in my opinion, for UCD. So they're not expected, in my opinion, not to win this game. But in their own dressing room, in their own minds, they'll be expecting themselves to win it. Because they know that they're still only a few points behind Finn Harps. Where Finn Harps have gone to Daily Mount already and got a point. Finn Harps have picked up a couple of... They've picked up a win where you don't expect them to win. And that's kind of what UCD are going to have to do at some point in the next win of matches is pick up a win. Um, they they try and keep, keep in tow with Finn Harps because I think... Even at this early stage of the season, I think if Finn Harps was to maybe get another win somewhere along the line, I think um, six points, even six points, might be too much for UCD. And I'm, I'm not being disrespectful of them, but it's a lack of experience that they have in their squad for the for this level. But look, they are a dangerous team if you don't um, perform well. And 
I would say that they very respect them very much last week, and that's why it came out came out by winners. Um, because Derry knew Derry just kept a foot in the gas. Um, for the entirety of the first half and the opening 15, 20 minutes of the second half, and the game was won. Then they took a foot off the gas. UCD got themselves a goal, but that's what you have to do against every team in this division. Is make sure when you're on it, you stay on it because, um, and UCD are no different. Yeah, all the pressures on Bowles, I think, coming into this game. But I do think they'll probably have too much firepower for UCD when it comes to it. Uh, you know, Burt, uh, be interested to see how they play because they brought on Promise the other day uh, for Kvartek and they changed it up a bit. She started wide, but after a while you drifted in and played with Junior up front. Will they go with that against UCD? It'll be interesting or will they kind of go with it more or less tried and trusted? But uh, Promise does give you an extra physical present. Presence. I do take Bowles and nick it, but they might have a few hairy moments in the game for me. I'm gonna go for Bowles two one. Uh, yeah, I was think I think a new city score. I think mm. new city will score as well. Um, you know what? I'm actually gonna go for a one one in this game. Mm. It wouldn't surprise me. Uh, on to Finn Harps and Finn Harps take on Shelburne. Another massive game. It's a really, really big game. It's actually four. Really, you'd have to say uh, this weekend and uh, massive game. Finn Harps and Shelburne. Obviously, the last time they met at Talca Park. Harps came away 3-0 winners. Shelburne, we know, have been better away from home this season. Um, five points between them in the table after 12 games. This is a game, I think, personally, the Finn Harps will feel like they have to win. Obviously, Ollie was talking a lot after the Pats defeat last week, and I do wonder if this was with Shelburne in mind, knowing how big of a game Shelburne is at home as well. Um, Dave Webb's are a massive loss. We knew he was going to be out for a while. I just had this feel in the back of my head that... Uh, you know, he was going to be out for the season. Just by the way, you know, the murmurs and talk and that. And unfortunately, Dave Webster is out for the rest of the season, having done his ligaments. And massive, massive loss for Harps because his leadership is invaluable at the back as well. And he's been a great leader there. Uh, who knows? He may never play for Harps again because he may move on at the end of the season. That could be it. But uh, that's a story for another time. But uh, this is a very, very difficult game to call. Um, in the past, you're definitely fancying Finn Harps in this kind of match. How do you see it? Um... I see it as a, a must not lose for Finn Harps. Mm. Simple as that. Even mm. at this early stage in the season, like we know Finn Harps are a team that tend to rally at some point in the season and and put in result not maybe maybe not performances, but put in results. And um, but I, I see this as a, a must not lose. Um because they're already five points behind mm. Shelburne. And that's with having beaten them three 0 So I think they have to mm. they well it's pretty or not pretty. They have to come away with at least a draw in this game. They can't allow Shelburne or, or Drogheda to get any more ground away from them because if they do, then they're pretty much all about trying to keep a, keep UCD away from them. And I think whenever you start to look over your shoulder, that's when things start not to go too well. Where um, if they're if they can get a result here and have themselves looking up the table at Shelburne and Drogheda rather than panicking about are UCD going to close the gap look uh, no doubt that Van Harps can put in a performance and get a result in this game um, if, correct me if I'm wrong but I think the only one they've had all season was it against Shelburne and Poker Park was yeah uh, literally the, the only, only one they've had, they've had this season yeah, yeah. and um do you think that would play into worrying. the match um, from, from Van Harps or even Shelburne's point of view in a positive or negative way? I think because Shelburne have responded mm-hmm. well to that defeat, I know they've lost, they done Dundalk last week, Early, and Bowles yeah. as well, but I think before that they had responded well because they'd, they'd put on a good performance against Shamrock Rovers, although they were beat. Mm-hmm. They went to Brandwell and won. Now they put in, they were beat by um, Bowles quite comfortably. But you you, you feel like they're not they're not due one of them performances against Bowles, if you know what I mean. That's another week, a few weeks away if it comes, like, you know, that kind of yeah, way. Yeah, and I, I think this will be more up Shelburne Street. The result mm-hmm. in Togo will be more up Shelburne Street than it will be up uh, Van Harps Street because, as I say, it's the only one they've had this season. And Ali Horgan will probably use that and say, look, boys, you've beat them already this season. You can go and do it again. And I've absolutely no doubt that they can, can do it. But the problem is, is, you have to then be able to do it in our games as well, rather than oh. just against Shelburne. And I think Shelburne, they've I know they've responded well to that defeat. And 
they're a good team away from home. And I think they, they might just, whatever they've been doing away from home, they might just try and do it here again at Fun Park and bring Fun Harps onto them rather than try and play it as a, as if they were in Toka. Like, I know they're the team that's above Fun Harps and maybe you'd be expecting them maybe to go and try and win the game and stuff like that. But they might just approach this the way they have every hour away game and bring the home team on to them because that's where they seem to be dangerous away from home is when our teams try to attack them. And, um, but I think... Um, for Shelburne, they'll want to win this one, so they will not just for themselves, but um, not not just for uh, themselves, but they try and create that doubt and gap between themselves and Finn Harps. Yeah, I, I have a feeling that Shelburne are going to go up and win this game because uh, I don't think they're due that type of bowls performance. I think that might happen every five or six games, maybe longer, and mm-hmm. they've uh, they responded against Dundalk and it, it annoyed them. And I know that Finn Harps' performance particularly annoyed them. So that's going to give them that extra bit of uh, maybe fire going up to Finn Harps mm-hmm. to try and right a few uh, wrongs correct. And, and Harps with a blow away that. there and a few other blows. I'm not no, sure if they're no, in, in a confident mood, let's say. No. Like Finn Harps are ravaged with injuries, I think, at the minute. Mm-hmm. And they probably don't have... All right, I'm not sure what kind of squad they had when they won 3-0 down there, but I would imagine that Dave Dave mm. Webster's picked up his injury since that game. Mm. They've lost maybe a couple of hours. Has Ryan? I think I spoke. I think Conley off. might have played in that game. Think, Someone correct me if I'm wrong in the comments, but I think he did. Yeah, I think Golly Horgan mentioned last week that Ryan Conley was going to be out for mm. a while as well. So mm. that's two not just key players, experienced players that Van Hart are missing, and. Mm. They and experienced players they, they, that, were actually, were, that were actually there last year and in some cases yeah, the year before, yeah, as and opposed to just new players. Like you know what I mean. The, the thing with the thing with Webster, he doesn't just bring you good defensive options. He brings mm-hmm. you a good option in the other box as well. He mm-hmm. he might not always mm-hmm. score when he goes up, but he's always a presence in there. He's mm-hmm. always putting um the other. He's always a man that you don't want to leave free because he. he He's a good centre half. He's a good header. He can. He's a good header of the ball. If you leave him free, he can score goals. So they they've lost them his presence in both boxes. Mm. Not they forget about the players that they've lost from last year as well, and they've lost their best centre half over the first ten games for the entire season. So I think based on that, I think um Shelburne will, will win this game. Um, and I know people in the past have said I've. Every time I predict Van Harps they lose it, it, it's an agenda. But I genuinely think that if Van Harps come on a game, well, I say to be fair, and... uh, they, like to be fair though, they're second bottom believe the They've won win mm. in twelve games. Like it's not surprise mm. if you might tip another team to beat them. Mm. To be fair, so <laughs> no, no, and I, I genuinely do call call it as I see it. And mm. look, if Van Harps go out and win this game, fair play them. They'll deserve their three points and. But mm. I think I think Shelburne will have too much for them in this game. Yeah, I just have a feeling Shelburne will rock up 2-0. I think Shelburne will yeah. rock up and beat them 1-0. I think, as you say, a draw for Harps wouldn't be too bad. A win would be great. I just have a feeling that Shelburne will make something. Uh, Sliger Rovers take on Shamrock Rovers in the, the Rovers derby, we'll call it, <laughs> uh, in um, the showgrounds. And Sligo had, that was a ridiculous game last week against Toronto. For pure entertainment, that was the best game I've seen this season. I was lucky enough to actually see it as well, if you get me. So it was an unbelievable game. And Sligo obviously won it late on. And uh, I talked about it in the, in the review and that. But, uh, you know, it was a massive win for them after the back of bad form. They had to put a couple of matches in a row. But uh, the pitch is still in bad, very bad condition, JP, at the showgrounds, I have to say. And I'm not blaming anyone or anything like that. I'm just saying the pitch is in bad condition. You know what I mean? At the moment of time. Yeah. Uh, it just has that bouncy feel to which it gets caught. But that said, Sligo played some nice football last week despite that. The midfield worked really well. I think Bolger, you know, he probably performed the best I've seen him play in a while. And you had Moran in there as well, for example. He was back in the fray and he was good. But uh, Shamrock Rovers coming to town, obviously on top form, five wins in a row. Uh, they tend to do well at the showgrounds as well. Um you know, it would be hard to tip against them to make it six in a row. But uh, mm. I remember Aaron Green was down there enjoying a chip, I think, a couple of years ago as well, wasn't he? Uh, that the Sligo <laughs> fans threw in. One of the more innocent problems, I, I suppose, we'll call that a problem, but innocent enough uh, situation. But uh, yeah, it's going to be an interesting game, I think. I mean, if Sligo could get anything out of it, you think 
they're back again on another run. You know mm. what I mean? But uh, it's a difficult one to judge, though, I have to say, because the pitch still isn't in. I know it's a Sligo played nice football last week, but Shamrock Rovers mightn't appreciate, let's say, the conditions of the mm. pitch at the moment. So it uh, might work in Sligo's favour a little bit, maybe. I, it could be like the result last week, they were 2 up, and it looked mm. like that they were going to end up getting a point out of it. And eventually they went 1 3 2. So that, that could be a, a turnaround mm. for their season. If, if you get me, like, uh, I know we've questioned them over the, uh, the way they've they've reacted to the Shelburne defeat, where it seemed to be a spiral. So mm. they, they'll be hoping that they can spiral up the ways as well. So, um, look. It's probably the most difficult fixture in the, the calendar is Shamrock Rovers. But look, and this is a fixture that was a turnaround of um, Shamrock Rovers mm. season, basically, because they've won every game. They were 2 all down, looking like they were heading for a third defeat in opening six or seven games. And they I wonder if that's it. something they'd be thinking of, JP, because obviously I do think that it was a clear turnaround since then. They probably sat down and had a serious blowout, I'd say, almost, mm. actually. Um, I'd mm. be surprised if they didn't. Um, based on how the season was going, but I wonder if they kind of look at Sligo and go, uh, "Let's prove a point here." Because we don't feel like we really proved a point in Tala, maybe. Yeah, yeah, like because, as you say, like they didn't really prove a point because although they got back and they they didn't win it, with, but that was probably Ed McGinty to, to blame for that. For from recollection, yeah. he made quite quite a mm-hmm. number of good saves mm-hmm. at two two. But as you say, the pitch is not in good nick. I know Shama Groovers like to get the ball down and play, and they might not appreciate it. And Sligo are probably used to it at this stage. So the Demons is probably just let, let's just get on with it. As we, as we say, they only have to play on it once every now and again. Sligo have to play on it every other week. So, um, but it, it will be an interesting game. Um, and as we say, when Derry went on that six max winning streak, eventually it was going to end, and it ended when we least expected it. Sham and Rovers are on a five max winning streak, <laughs> and it, it will end sometime. Um, they're not CD. <laughs> <laughs> well, but and uh, I'll save that bit just in case. <laughs> and there, there's nothing. Yeah. There's nothing they suggest that it, it, it can't be at the Sligo showgrounds. Like because yeah. Sligo are a fairly decent, decent outfit, even though sometimes it can be very, very inconsistent. So mm-hmm. if Alexa Greg Bulger and all back now and if they can get Kina scoring goals mm. again and Mata, then who knows if they can they, they can cause problems here for, for Shamrock Rovers. I still think Shamrock Rovers are going to go here and just do enough and nick a kind of like a dirty 1-0, maybe 2-1 win. Uh, look, some of their top players are flying at the moment. Like When I say some of their top players, they're all top players of Shamrock Rovers in relation to this league, aren't they? So, you know, right. but when you've got Jack Byrne and Mandrew in top form and players like that, I mean... It's hard not to get results, isn't it? I think they they've just more match winners in their team. Like yeah. they've been touched on there, Mandrew and Jack Byrne, and then you've Graham Burke and Aaron Green and Rory Gaffney. Like the the quality throughout their squad. Is, Andy Lyons at the moment. Andy Lyons as well as a goal, he's a goal threat as well. He's probably going to challenge um. Rory Gaffney for the Shamrock Rovers top goal scorer. I think he's top scorer at the moment. Believe it or not, Shamrock Rovers. I believe well, he, there you go. Yeah. He's a one they chase, so well maybe that will make the the strikers more frightening at the fact that they're being outscored by hmm. by a wing back. They might not like that, but um, my head, my heart's tell me Slag will get a result, but my head's tell me Shamrock Rovers are going to nick it because of the quality that they have in their team. So I'll say two one Shamrock Rovers. Yeah, we have the loud derby as well this Friday night, JP. Dundalk take on Drogheda United. So the last one they met, of course, Drogheda beat them 1-0 at Head in the Game Park. A uh, really good performance from them. That's only two defeats for Dundalk this season. That was one of them. Drogheda did beat them in Oriel last year as well. So uh, an interesting loud derby, I think, as well. Obviously, Drogheda disappointed to lose 3 2 Sligo after a very spirited display, you'd have to say, again. Yeah. Um, it... It was a good, good response. They Drogheda, uh, Drogheda were in good, good form, unbeaten in six. I think and on that, yeah. find themselves two 0 down early on. It was a good response by them. They, they get back in the game and uh, beaten and they end up and stop this time. I think wasn't it? So yeah. They did not take too much disappointment from it. I think. Um, but the, at that 
point this season when they lost? Did you have they were at the stage where you were thinking that they were going to nick one of them close mm. games or they were going to lose it? And they went out and lost it. Um, and I think they look. They looked very. I was actually there. They looked very poor that day. And mm-hmm. I thought, you know, this is, um, you know, obviously they're kind of starting again a little bit, but it's going to take longer than I thought. But they've actually they've looked kind of good more or less since I have to say. Yeah, like um, they've three wins in their last five games. They've lost their Rovers mm. and drew with Pats. Like so, mm. it's a it's a good response. Like at the point where they were. On one and seven first seven games or something like that there mm. now they've they three and five and now they're they're looking at the European places and um Steve O'Donnell want they kick on not only that as we know draw a one in Oil Park last year um mm. as did our teams and they weren't but no they, they weren't exactly read. yeah exactly they weren't exactly what you would call uh, primed on dark last season yeah. We know we know the reasons for that, but Dundalk know that they didn't play well in that last derby game. Mm-hmm. So they'll want to like put down a, a message that they say that that was a one off, that we're gonna go out. They've got the big crowd behind them, I'm sure it'll be noisy. The fans will have their drums going and whatnot and that it'll, it'll be it'll be a noisy Oriel Park and um great win last week against Shelburne. Mm-hmm. Looked like they were heading for another draw. And they ended up with a bit of quality. Good ball in from Keith Ward and a great header by, by John Martin. And uh, it'll be difficult for them. It, it will, because as we know, Drogheda are in good form. And Drogheda on that one, they lose two in the points um, after going five in a row without without losing. So um, it, it'll be a good game, I think. Yeah, I think from the dock, the dock have obviously won the last few home matches, but they're really trying to make it a, a fortress. And as you say, after losing a head of the game park and the performance to put in, I think they'll really be motivated for this. Uh, from Drotter's point, Stephen Bradley, I think, is suspended as well, isn't he, for this game? I think he missed Yeah, he was game. sent off last week, if I recall right. correctly. Yeah, and um, I don't know what the story is with Dean Williams, if he's available yet for Drotter, but he's a very good finisher. Um, and, uh, you know, he can be a good option along with lines, even if they flip over, sometimes one gets 60, one gets 20 or 30, whatever. Well, I think from Drotter's point of view, as you say, unbeaten at six before that defeat last week, but um, still very spiritual display because they were two down after three minutes, and you know, but they got themselves back into the game, and uh, you know, they they would have been frustrated with the red card because the red card happens um two minutes after they come from two down to make it two all, and then the backs are against the wall for what 25, 30 yeah. minutes, and eventually Sligo score. So, you know, I wouldn't have wrote really their draw to put possibly even nick in that match actually. Um, had they had 11 on the field so Evan Ware will obviously miss this game as well for, for Drotada that's something I should point out to be fair but uh, look Drotada will definitely be spirited here there's no doubt about it and if Dundalk mm-hmm. are going to win they, they do have to perform like they have to perform ways about that we, we've seen that at the Oriole game they didn't or the United mm-hmm. head in the game park the game there um, they didn't perform well they lost 1-0 and from chatting to people that were at the game Dundalk didn't even throw the kitchen sink or anything at them. There wasn't none of this hanging on for Drogheda that they they made it fairly easy for Drogheda. So, um, if as we've seen, saw so with the Lexer UCD over the last few weeks, that if 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 you're not on it by by one percent, you can be punished. Um, by any team in this league, and um, Drogheda, they're a good side now. They they. They struggled to adapt to the, the new regime there and a lot of new players and, and stuff like that. But I think now they're well in the season and they they're they're well adapted now. So they they be even better now and as I th- I think than than what they were whenever they last met Dundalk. But Dundalk will think the same thing. So um I th- I think this is going to be a very good game. Um, it'll be a tight game, and I'm going to go for a one-one draw. <laughs> Yeah, same. I'm going for one all as well. One all, but Dundalk could easily nick this as well. Mm-hmm. I think I, that's where I, I can't, I'm deciding on. So I don't think Jota will win this game. I as as about to say, I can't see mm. Dundalk losing it. No, but this is a game that I think could end will end up a draw. But not surprised mm. if Dundalk were they won it. Like, 
Mm. At the same time, nothing would surprise me. But um, <laughs> I'm just throwing, I'm just throwing that in just in case Drogba do win and <laughs> take him back. Oh no, Drogba won't win this game or whatever. Dundalk sorry, won't lose the game, but uh, it could happen. There's no doubt about it. I just feel the way uh, Dundalk are at the moment, or the way they're set, and the motivation that they'll have behind this game now. They might it might be enough for them to nick it, it might be, or get a draw, but possibly nick it. So yeah, we'll uh, uncover them both bases. <laughs> Uh, finally, St. Patrick's and Lennox. There's a lot of big games on this week when you look at all the pictures. And finally, St. Patrick's and Lennox take on Derry City in Inchicore. Pats have only been beaten once at home this season. The problem is, they had a few draws that they'd be disappointed with at home. Obviously, the last time they met the Bandywell, it was a 2 1 win for Derry with that late uh, Will um, patching goal. Um, Derry responded well, obviously, as we said, uh, to their first defeat, really, and they're still top of the league by a point. Um, it's an interesting one, this, because it's an opportunity for Derry to go to a fairly big team, like, you know what I mean, and maybe nick a result and kind of go, you know what, they're the type of games that maybe win the league or challenge for the league or whatever. But at the same time, it's an opportunity for Pat to actually close the gap to four points on Derry all of a sudden. Um, so it's a big game, isn't it, JP? It's massive. Like, it, like a lot of people are still thinking it's Derry and Rovers and the battle for the title. And- but as you say, a, a one for Pats and they're they within four points of the four points of Derry. Um, it might still only be six points off the top of the table, depending mm. on how the the result goes between Sligo and Sean Grovers. So it's a big game for both teams because, as you say, Derry will want to put down a marker, but I know they've put Rovers and Pats and likes of that already this season. Mm. But that was in the brand well. So it's time and earlier now to, in the season as well, like yeah. you know, when the pressure starts so, to get a little bit more, yeah. So it's time now to go to an away venue like this and pick up that kind of win. Um, and I just hope that they haven't used up all their goals against GCD. Um, but um, it'll be an hour, as you say, five very good games this this weekend. And for me, this is probably the the pick of the bunch. Um, because mm-hmm. of where the two teams are in the table. And, mm-hmm. We're going to go back on the, the scoring books after five or six games without it. Um, Matty Smith was looking last week and the only thing was missing from this he, game. He hasn't before. scored yet, has he, JT? No, he hasn't. So that's uh, <laughs> just about to say that. I can um, see him going to Inchicore. Dodd's Law, Law could come in. Dodd's Law yeah. could, could strike here uh, at Inchicore. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think the only thing was missing from his performances against Drogheda and UCD mm. was... A goal, but in saying that, I think in the two games he had chances to get a shot the way and he didn't. And he tried to maybe take the another man on, and eventually the chance went for him. So I, t- I think he's but, just trying to find that full sharpness. He's getting there though. I can see even the way he's playing, the way he's moving. Um, yeah, he's getting yeah. there and he's going to pinch your core and pride, of course. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know yourself, but like I did, I was looking at it there, like you know, just in general, and uh, both teams have been very good defensively this season. Like there, you've only conceded 10 goals. Be pretty good defensively, even apart from the goals concessions, the way they play. Pats have conceded eight, so they'd be good defensively as well. And um, the difference at the moment is that Derry have scored nine more goals, so they just look like they have a few more strings to their attacking bow in mm. terms of getting goals with Pats. Um, you know, you could Owen Doyle, I know, got two last week, and you're hoping from their point of view that he can get more goals now, but they need more goals from him generally. Uh, Dara Burns, a very good player, um, probably could chip in with an extra goal or two. I'm sure he'd admit that as well. Um, the likes of Mark Doyle and players like that, Billy King, you'd like to see more goals. Even Chris Forrester, um, you'd like to see him get more goals, uh, t- to be fair, even though he's been very good this season. But with Derry, yeah, Matty Smith, we know what he's like. Like, you know what I mean? He's capable of getting the goals. He's only really back. Uh, yeah. McGonagall, of course, uh, Patchen, and uh, we can't leave out boys either. Good on, boys. <laughs> <laughs> I'm building up to that. So there, yeah. there's a. You know what I mean? Like, there's, there, I think that's the thing with Derry, though. They do have a striker there who scores goals. But he's, McGonagall isn't what I call an all-in-out goal scorer, though, because no. he does so many different things for the team. Yes, he will get the goals and he's top scoring the league at the moment. But Derry mm. have players like who could... Even Lafferty got a good few goals last season. And the likes of McJanus chips in with goals. Mm. So Derry have goals all Patching over the team. Well. Patching, of course. Free kicks, penalty kicks, long shots. Um. And that's what they have at the moment. Probably the next team, if you look at Rovers, we're talking about match winners. I think Derry are next in line, though, to be honest there. And that could be the difference in Inchicore. But, you know, right. with Pats, you know yourself, Pats at home, crowd, big crowd behind them. If they play well, they won't be easy beat either, you know? 
Aye, uh, no, they like we, we all know they've they've beaten Rovers already in Inchicore this year, so yeah. it'll be a feller in their cap if if they can beat Derry is add Derry to that list like so as I say Derry've lost one game and they've responded well. Um and one man you didn't mention there was, was Patrick McLennie. He might not he, he might not um get a bag full of goals, um, but what he does have in his locker is is they pull a pass out of absolutely yeah. nowhere and create a yeah. chance, which is what happened for the first goal last week against GCD. And do, do you expect him to start in a game like this? It, it'll or be interesting think, to see. Yeah. It'll be interesting to see. I think because the, there's been a seven day gap between UCD and Pats, possibly yeah. might play him from the start, or he might just try and keep go with go with legs in there for the first 50, 55, 60 minutes. And then mm. bring them off the last half hour if the game's still still tight. Um mm. so it'll be interesting to see. But he he's definitely a player that like he, the first goals, nobody else I think on the pitch would have saw the pass that he played for, for Walt Patchen. And then there was later on in the game then there was three men around him and he just flicked the ball over the the heads and Ronan Boyce was in and goal. So there's three things that he'll do on the pitch that nobody else will see, and that's sometimes as valuable as having somebody like Patchen and McGonagall mm. who can come up with with big if goals. You're taking, if you're taking this game, might be tight, which it probably should be tight. If you are looking at twenty minutes ago, what have we got to bring on that maybe can unlock or change something, mm. or maybe just reinforce something in a game? Mm. Um, you're up against. I mean, if I'm a Pats player and it's 20 minutes to go, and I go, for God's sake, here comes McLean, you know, you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> because I'm tired. Under the opposition head. I'm tired. If he's there, all it takes is one pass. Like, if he's there from the start, mm. Pats will have a lot of time. They they adjust them and mm. get their heads around him. But uh, as you say, like, if he comes on with 25 minutes to go, players have been busting a gut for for nearly an hour, running around, and all of a sudden they look and they go. If you say Eric McLennie coming on, all of a sudden your your mind becomes tired and you could switch off and just give him that yard of space that he needs to, to create the chance. And look, I think this is going to be, as I said, and this is going to be a good game. It'll be a tight game. But I think Daryl will nick it. I think Daryl will nick it 1 0. I think similar to the Dundalk and draw that I think. I think it'll be a draw, but I can't see Derry losing. I don't know what it is. I just can't. No, I can't. I can't see Derry losing either. So, uh, I don't know. Like, I do think Pats, you can argue Pats are due a good performance at home. I know Finn Harps at home, but they kind of more of a pre- professional performance and maybe one eye in this game as well. Um, but I do think it'll be tight. I'd be surprised if somebody scores th- two goals. I hate saying this because you know what's going to happen every four or three years. Old. <laughs> but uh, but uh, I would. I really would be surprised if somebody scores two goals unless it's a last couple of minutes. It's one all mm. and there's a someone nicks it in the last couple of minutes like mm. in the brand new L as such. But um, personally, I think it'll be a one-all draw, but I can't see Derry losing the game. Um, so it'll be interesting to see what happens. But uh, I think it could be similar. Anyway. I think yeah. it could be similar to our yeah. game. And Polka Park earlier in the season. Oh, where yeah. You know that where we were away from home and we didn't create a lot, but mm. we got one chance and scored. And I think it could be something similar. Mm. They did that game because mm. I think the game the Brandywell was a lot more. You ch- know the game that between the two and the Brandywell, yeah. there was there was a bit of chances for both teams and both mm. keepers had to make saves to keep our teams in mm. it. Like and um, I just fancy as well if if um. If Pats and Derry hypothetically created four or five similar chances, I'd kind of expect Derry to take more of them, you know, that kind of way at the moment. Yeah. I mean, yeah. You know, may- maybe I'm wrong. If Owen Doyle really gets going, then that's a big difference. But uh, that's just the way I see it with Derry at the moment, you know. I, uh, and as you say, like, Owen Doyle is going to be up against not just two centre half, but he's going to have three centre half, yeah. basically. So it's, mm. can they get the support up to him for mm. that as well at the same time? So, um, as I say, I just I, I think it'll be similar to how we played it, the game against Shelburne and Polka Parker. Won't be a lot of chances, but I think Daryl Daryl Nick at one now. I think. And that bombshell will end the show. Thanks, guys, for watching. <laughs> Subscribe if you haven't subscribed before. Hit your bell notification button so you keep up to date with the videos. Let us know what you think of the comments. Give us a few predictions as well. Some massive games this weekend and. Uh, 
we'll see on uh, the next day if any of us are right as well. Thanks, JP. <laughs> Thanks, Keith.